so obviously the topic of discussion today is on um enterprise and jewel let's start with jewel first of all is it a long time coming yes a long yeah. time is that that tunnel just like in alice in wonderland about Plaza beach that has not been working for a very long time Fair to use the platform pitch beach for again, it's still working and running and stuff, but yeah, it 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 needs def desperately TLC, major TLC. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. I mean, what would you like to see done to it? We've seen Chessington do a refurbishment with Hocus Pocus Hall, but using an IP. Do you want to see him use the folklore? Do you want to? Do you think we're going to see an IP come into this if it's a re major refurbishment, or do you think it should be something original? Uh, keep it original, but take the ride, ride, the uh, ride out, and put a trackless um thing out in. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. trackless yeah. trackless system. That's it. Um, would you sort of revert it back to the old haunted house? Would you take, would you take the guns out? Would you keep them in? Would you make it a bit different in terms of its interactivity I'll, level? I'll probably take them out. Yeah, you take them out. Yeah. What would, what would you replace it with? What would you want to make the ride stand out without the guns? More spooky. Mm. So, more, just like so in, less family and more family thrill. Yeah, just like Disneyland with the um, haunted house. Okay, the haunted mansion at Disney. Mansion, sort of that that's it. Yeah, like a Phantom Manor type uh, yeah. level. Part of me thinks that they might just revert it back to its to the way it was before 2003 because I hate to say this but I dislike the interactive element of the ride it doesn't make you feel ill quite as helpless yeah yeah I get that um if they were to refurbish it then would you see them going with an IP or would you like to see something original happening to the ride I would say either something original or just or just an overhaul of the original theme but definitely not an IP, because I know over some theme parts, especially Disney and Universal, are becoming quite notorious for it. It's strange, mate, because we're right at the start of the season when I first went. It must have been two or three days after opening the start of the season. I went in, blasters are working great, all the effects were working. It kind of, I wouldn't say it looked refreshed, but it was certainly more vibrant than it has been. And the, the guns were working perfectly, which is rare in itself. Fast forward well to now to this week when i went like, over the last few days and effects aren't working blasters are jamming and not even registering scores they've got a lot of effects that are just out of action obviously you've got the sad state of the tunnel that's just been in disrepair for for many many seasons now you've got things on the floor which just haven't been tidied up you've got the ride operators saying that they're not just kind of leaving stuff up in the air at the moment it just seems as though they're leaving it to wreck and ruin which normally is when alton towers or in the process of updating something that's been dilapidated, for example. So there has been, some, when I posted the video a few days ago talking about it, someone actually messaged and said that they saw somebody with plans chatting outside a duel. That could be anything, it really could. It could be someone talking about plans at a completely different area of the park. They just so happen to be standing outside of Jewel. It would be nice to see it updated, though. And as you probably saw the photo of the two skeletons and that dress table and the entrance that was surfacing on social media, why go through the effort of doing that? Is it a little hint that something's coming? Is it just the write-ups have got a bit bored and added that as a laugh? Who knows? But um, it'll be good to see uh, some work done because it, it desperately needs it. But like I said in the comments, it's Merlin. So what we're <laughs> going to expect? I'm nervous. Yeah, I think it's going to be a guessing game at this stage until we see anything official come out of the park. I think that if there's any ride right now that needs a refurbishment, it is probably Jewel and it's been needing it for a good three, four, maybe even yeah. five years minimum. Um, in terms of if this will be refurbished, what kind of refurbishment are you expecting from this potentially? Are you expecting something minor like it was with the Towers of Care program a few years back? Or are you expecting hopefully like a, what Chessington did with Hocus Pocus Hall, which is like an overhaul of the whole thing, but maybe not with an IP? I'd love to see an overhaul without an IP because I remember that the TLC thing was literally just a lick of UV paint, wasn't it? And it was like, oh, <laughs> oh it looks it looks so beautiful, you know. We, we, as the Alton Towers fans who have seen that ride in such a bad state for so long, even something like UV paint got us all excited about seeing this kind of like <laughs> revival, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, in terms of, I'd like to see an overhaul. I mean, 
Merlin have got the the know-how. They've got the theme in. They just need to invest, and that's something that Alton Towers may struggle, especially with how expensive the retract's going to be. Clearly, SW9's in the works. That's been going on for quite some time now, so there's money set aside for that. We know what Merlin are capable of with Jumanji at Gordaland. Yes, there's still a few niggles with that ride, but it's, in terms of theming, it's probably one of their biggest, if not the biggest, like grand scale dark ride that they've ever done. They've got the potential to do something like that, but where, which kind of avenue they go down, family thrill or back to old school haunted house, who knows? But I'd love to see an overhaul, brand new effects, and um, just put some effort in because Alton Towers, like I said, they just leave stuff to rack of rooms. Put some effort in that this is your flagship park. It is the Merlin flagship park of the UK, whether you like it or not, it really is in terms of investment. So just put some effort in and show the UK you mean business and put a dark ride on the grand scale, on the grand stage of the world, you know, a big dark ride, big investment, whether it happens now or in five years time, I don't care. Just get something done in dual. Yeah. I, and in terms of, I mean, obviously we're sort of talking about this refer potential refurbishment. I mean, like we said, it's been a long time coming, you know, and, and we sort of talk about how the haunted house anniversary is this year. Hmm. I mean, is it can it could it be great if they sort of went back to the old haunted house but reinvested in a modern way so maybe not take the guns off and just revert it back to what it was before 2003 but maybe just you know completely overhaul it but change it back to the haunted house story and maybe put the backstory back into the rags we saw them the backstory screens taken out with the towers of Care program so maybe bring the backstory back into the ride yeah exactly that that would be something really cool i mean if you're going to keep the lasers don't go on a Disney level and put in a Buzz Lightyear ride, for example, because that's probably the best example of a laser gun ride that I've ever experienced. Completely yeah. immersive, you know, where the laser gun becomes like an attachment of yourself and it's kind of immersing you into the experience. Whereas as Jewel, it's basically the same as me and you going in a shopping trolley with two guns going through a little scare maze. You know what I mean? It's it's not it's not really it's not really the same experience. But if they're gonna stick with laser guns drag us into the story make sure it's not mm. just shooting at just random halloween props that you can buy from the range make sure it immerses you in the experience you're going through if you're getting rid of the guns make that experience much scarier make it make it something special even adding sort of better animatronics and stuff like that just anything just to give it a, a bit of a boost and uh, get those queues up again because jewel rarely has anything longer than a 20 minute queue so to see it refurbished and on even 30 40 50 minutes even though it'll be a longer wait for us it'll still be an attraction worth queuing for cross fingers this is obviously very interesting because usually when merlin magic making a spotted around rides of course you remember they were spotted around the house of monsters scare maze a couple of years back a few years back they were spotted at charlie and the chocolate fights the ride and of course you know charlie became the alton towers dungeon a few months down the line from that and a few months down the line from merlin magic making being around house of monsters that became gangster granny the ride so obviously you know it, 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 it's, it seems like a foregone conclusion that most times when merlin magic making is spotted around jewel you know they usually are there to sort of scout the ride and if you want some extra evidence towards this on your screen right now Fandami Dozy is the second image in question. Now this is the extended queue line and you can see it's been cleared up. Now this extended queue line has not been used in a while. So this is, I think the signs are definitely pointing to a refurbishment of some kind with Jewel. Um, you know with Merlin Magic making Sparta, with the extended queue being cleared out. Uh, we've had previous rumors and murmuring, murmurings around Jewel and something happening to Jewel maybe next season um, And it does make sense especially when you've got all the work going on with Nemesis and the retracking of Nemesis next season for the 2024 season um, You need something sort of between Jewel and Subterra to sort of keep the area going uh, Obviously you've got Galactica, Blade and the Funken Fly if that comes back next season in Forbidden Valley but in Gloomy Woods, you've got an you've got a ride like Jewel that's not going through the best of times right now and needs something happening to it just to keep that end of the park busy while they're working on Nemesis and to keep that sort of gloomy wooden Forbidden Valley section busy while they're retracking the big Nemesis ride. Um, 
So I feel like this could be a really great idea. I think this could be a great way for the part to go. Um, I am going to talk more in detail about my thoughts on the possibility of Jewel being refurbished and what I could see happen to it and what things I could see going into it uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, let's just share my thoughts on the spotting of Merlin Magic Making and the clear out of the extended queue as potential evidence to suggest a Jewel refurbishment for 2023. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Six of all ages. That is your news update. Now, shout out to Towers Street again for the pictures. Uh, credit goes to you. Um, now, obviously, overall, it's a very interesting situation. Like we said, when we usually see Merlin Magic making around a, a, an old ride, usually get it's, it's not too long before they start working on the inside and start working on it. Um, <clears throat> so I think Merlin could be just scouting the area for now because it is still operating for now anyway. Um, but we don't know how long that will be for. Usually when Merlin Magic Making are outside these rides, they're usually closed or have been closed for over a year. So, I mean, look look at Charlie for over a year, for example, and, um, you know, House of Monsters, that wasn't operating after Scarefest, so obviously that's been closed for a few months before Merlin Magic Maker was sort of spotted around that site. So, obviously, with an attraction still currently running, maybe they're just scouting the area for a while and then move into the attraction at a certain date. So, I mean, to be fair, if you if you sort of look at the look at it from this perspective and look at it from the queue line perspective, I really don't think Jewel's going to close until uh, sort of end of August, start of September. I really don't see it happening until then. Because, again, you look at Bubble Works, for example, when that got refurbished into the Gruffalo, that closed around September time, and then they sort of moved in and they kept the ride system and just did a whole re-theme to it and then it reopened for the start of the season in March in 2017 so you know you look at bubble works into Gruffalo for example and think maybe that's what we're looking at here with Jewel maybe it's just a case of keeping the ride system and then bringing in a new theme um, now obviously we know with Jewel a lot has to be done to it we know that certain theming elements need to be changed we know that certain effects need to start working again we know that the blasters sometimes can be a bit sketchy um, some people have said it's worked, some people said it hasn't worked at times. Um, we just need a bit more consistency with the ride, and I think some kind of massive overhaul could do that ride justice. Now, what it could be, at this, again, at this stage, we don't know. The big, ho the big hope that I don't want it to be is an IP, and I've said that for months. I've said that for over a year now with rides. I don't want an IP here. Um... <clears throat> Look at, I think Heidi Park in the past invested in a Ghostbusters attraction. I don't want to see Ghostbusters coming into Alton Towers. I mean, it's a foregone conclusion, conclusion that that is a possibility. I just don't want that to happen, personally. Um, I'd like to see maybe a family horror theme coming in. Maybe like a family version. Um, I know I'm not a massive fan of IPs, but look at what Thought Park did with the Black Mirror Labyrinth. Maybe Alton Towers does like a... A partnership with a horror franchise and they bring that into the ride i mean we do have horror franchises in, in scare mazes and also in rides you got saw the ride you used to have saw alive you used to have cabin in the woods you used to have my bloody valentine at thought park alton towers you know we have the child and chocolate factory film obviously that wasn't horror but you get my point um, so they have brought in intellectual properties before, so it's not going to be a foregone conclusion that that won't be the direction they go in for this potential refurbishment. I just don't want it to be Ghostbusters. In fact, if, if anything, I'd like to see a family horror film go in, or some kind of big horror franchise to really pay attention to the details and the theming. Um, I mean, they've got some great potential to go with some potential horror movies and bring them in. So, I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be very interesting. Credit goes to Theme Park Guide for the actual uh, picture. Uh, there's a guy called Michael uh, that sent the picture into Towers Time, so credit goes to him. Uh, so please do like, comment, subscribe, click the location bell to name this YouTube video. And for now, let's share with you exactly what's going on. So as you can see on your screen right now, fan dabby dozy, that is the evidence right there that suggests that everything will be coming to an end. 06 plus 09 equals the jewel is over with the message, this is my house. So that immediately indicates 
that were looking at a ho something paying homage to the classic attraction, the haunted house. Um, so that's where we stand on that piece of evidence. Now, for those of you who need a bit more history on this particular attraction, Gloomy Wood was created, the area that it sits in, in 1992, on the path between Katanga Canyon and Forbidden Valley, then known as Thunder Valley. For many years, there was only one attraction in this woodland area, the Haunted House, which later became Jewel in 2003, and then the Haunted Hollow came in in 2007. So, the Haunted House, the original attraction. So... This would take you on a tour of the house to meet some of its more interesting habit inhabitants, some residing in the seamlessly endless Great Hall, or the more sinister sounding Ghost Corridor and the Hall of Spiders. Once departing the house itself, the coffins would weave through the ghoulish garden before heading into the finale in a deadly looking swamp. The haunted house was replaced in 2003, um, 10 years after it first opened, well, it closed 10 years after it first opened and then reopened the year after in 2003, as Jewel, the haunted house, strikes back. Um, now, this brought an interactive element to the ride, with many of the features of the haunted house trans transitioned to the new attraction, with the only major loss being the swamp scene which disappeared until the Mad Professor's lab at the end of the ride. Now, of course, Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back and the original Haunted House are both manufactured by Mac Wright. Uh, now, Mac Wright, of course, is uh, a very good manufacturer, a very well-known manufacturer. Uh, now, this cost £3 million overall, this attraction, with a 6 minute 15 duration, an unaccompanied height restriction of 1.1 metres, uh, and a Max Rider height of none, with fast track and ride photography as well. Uh, now, if the the original ride opened on the 31st of March 1992, but it was rethemed and reopened on the 5th of April 2003 after its closure at the end of 2002. The track length is 300 meters with a capacity of 1,296 riders per hour with five passengers per, per car. And if you've heard the announcement, you'll know it's three people in the front and two in the back. <laughs> uh, now, let's share my thoughts on everything that's been shown in this video and also what I think will be happening to Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Back. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Six of all ages. That is the latest on Jewel's future. 06 plus 09 equals the Jewel is over. The Jewel is done. The Jewel is going away from Alton Towers Resort. First of all, do I think it was the right time to close the ride? Absolutely. For multiple reasons, but I'm going to pick out two most of all. The first reason is, look what's happening over at Nemesis for 2024. It's having this huge retract. So look at Forbidden Valley. You've got Galactica, you've got the Blade, you've got um, the Retro Squad ride, if that is coming back, which I don't know if that is yet. Um, I, I bet, but with Nemesis going away for about a year, you'd expect the, uh, the Funk and Fly to return for maybe a third year or some kind of new uh, Retro Squad ride to... Uh, coming to Forbidden Valley for that year. So you've got Blade, you've got a, a Retro Squad Rides, whatever that may be, and you've got Galactica as well as the Blade overall. So you've got Forbidden Valley with about three rides. Though. Obviously, Ripsaw's site is, no longer, is now home to the Funk and Fly or whatever Retro Squad ride there may be next year. Uh, Nemesis Subterra isn't being used anymore um, unless it's for a scare fest or something like that, or maybe that is a second ride in a or attraction for 2023, along with this jewel refurbishment, you never, never know. But you wouldn't rule it out, would you? Uh, since we've seen stuff testing inside the building everything all year round, so it can't be really a scare maze unless, unless there's some major detail and thought gone into it, uh, from the start of the year. So, again, so Terra's still for question for 2023 as well. So you've got three attractions in Forbidden Valley, potentially four if something happens in Subterra next year. Then you've got Katanga Canyon, River Rapids, and Mine Train. So you've got five, potentially six rides overall in the, those two areas. Gloomy Wood is the pathway in between those two rides. A sixth slash seventh attraction, again, depending on Subterra, would add to that area or that section of the park, that whole entire section of the park, while Nemesis has its retracking for it to reopen the following year in 2024. So that's one reason. The second reason is it has needed massive work for years. And that's not even me being uh, mad or 
or harsh about Jewel because you, you know it's, it's hard to criticize Alton Towers sometimes because they do put on some wonderful events they have a fantastic theme park and it's getting better every year but there are still areas that do need improvement and as a theme park journalist I have to be harsh but fair so one of the main attractions that has needed work for a long time now is Jewel and I've said that for about five years now even off camera I've said it to mates of mine and friends of mine from the theme park industry and theme park enthusiasts that it's needed work for about five six years now it's when they introduced the LEDs that brightened up the effects that soiled the mechanisms a few years back. They gradually started making improvements over the last couple of years, last three, four years. Um, we saw the change to the soundtrack, change to the queue line. Uh, we saw little enhancements this year as well, over the last year or two. But again, just nothing made it go back to its full potential as an interactive shooting attraction. So it makes sense getting rid of the ride now or changing it up into something completely new or maybe paying homage to a classic attraction. So first of all, it helps with the Nemesis Reed throughout the following year and also Jules needed it for a good few years now. So two major reasons as to why this is a great decision by Alton Towers Resort to close the ride, give it a massive upgrade and see where it goes. Now the next question is what's going to happen to the ride now? Obviously there has been murmurings, there has been rumours of people being spotted around the site with plans. There has been rumours and murmurings of old haunted house drawings that speculates the, re the return of the original haunted house in a, maybe a brand new way. Um, it's kind of like Terror of the Towers in a way, it's sort of like you got the original, then you enhance the original with the Bloodfest Banquet, then you do the What Lies Within, then it goes away and then you bring it back as the attic Terror of the Towers. It's kind of like that where it's like the haunted house, Jewel, and then maybe bring the haunted house back in a new way, sort of like the haunted house returns kind of thing. So uh, I think that there's definitely room for creative potential with the return of the haunted house. Another route they could go down, I personally wouldn't be a fan of this, but I wouldn't rule it out. So if you don't agree with this, don't get mad at me in the comment section, please. Just get mad at the potential of this happening. And that is an IP. Something like, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, Ghostbusters. That went into Heidi Park just a couple of years ago, a few years ago, so Ghostbusters would not be ruled out. It would not be ruled out at all, because it is an intellectual property. We know how IPs are dominating the theme park market over the last few years, so you would not rule out that potential investment from happening. So, Return of Haunted House, Ghostbusters IP, any other IP, horror IP coming into it, you wouldn't rule it out. I mean, Black Mirror, I mean, they've worked with Thought Park. Are they going to do a multi-park deal with Alton Towers here? You Again, you wouldn't rule it out at all. Um, would you rule out Alton Towers working with a different IP? Probably not. Something like, pff, I don't know, maybe like um, something to do with Lionsgate. I know they have that partnership with Thought Park. Maybe a new partnership with Alton Towers. Um, Stranger Things, I think, again, is another IP that could do a multi-year deal with. Um, and launch some kind of new outer world section of the park, sort of in between Katanga. So sort of, as you're leaving the African village before you go into the depths of the Forbidden Valley, you get transported and teleported into the outer world or something like that, or the other world, should we say. I don't have a lot of knowledge on strange things, but I know it's called the other world, or based around the other world. So, yeah, like an other world kind of mini section in between the African village and the depths of the Forbidden Valley kind of thing. Um, if you want me to choose my favourite choice, I would go with um, the return of the haunted house in a brand new way. So I get Matt rides in, I bring in some new modern day dark ride technology. Maybe not a shooting ride, but again, I wouldn't be against that, especially if they go with the Ghostbusters IP. Um, but I think that it's just an interactive dark ride. Not a lot of screens. Bring in some screens, but not a lot of screens. New animatronics, brand new lighting. I mean, look what they did with the Gangster Granny building. That used to be an old indoor playground, inflatable playground called Bubble World with the cafe at the side. That's now the shop. And then you've got the building itself, which was the playground, which, of course, you know, before Bubble World, it used to be like the Crest Street playground, Bob the Builder, Tweenies, all those kind of themes. Now it's a proper interactive dart ride. And yes, there's some effects that I do want to see work again. The bubbles was nice last time. I've got to go admit the bubbles last time was nice when I was Road Gangster Granny. But you see what they can do with just a few screens and maybe some animatronics here and there or some cardboard animatronics, that kind of, that kind of thing. So 
I don't want to see, I want to see some proper animatronics and maybe a few screens here and there, but some proper interactive effects, not, not um, a shooting dart ride, but still some interactivity about it kind of thing, if, if you get what, if you get my gist. So, um, for me, I would go with the return of the haunted house in a brand new way, but I would not rule out Ghostbusters, I would not rule out another IP, I would not rule out an original theme entirely and getting rid of Jewel altogether. Maybe a spin-off story of Emily, maybe use the Emily character from the Jewel story, and reinvent her as her own sub story for this new attraction for next year because i mean again to hint towards that look back at the message on the on the sign it said at the bottom this is my house so could that could that be hinting at maybe emily coming in uh, could it be hinting at the spirits of the original haunted house taking back the property again we don't know but what I can tell you is if you are not if you're still not certain about dual closing by the end of this year you must be living under a rock in my opinion because we know now if we didn't know already that dual is leaving the park 2003 to 2021 yes it's been on its last legs for a good few years similar story to bubble works how it was on its last legs for a good couple of years and then they finally did something with it same with dual same with Flume, to be fair. I mean, I would like to have seen Flume stay for maybe at least another year or two more or give it a massive theming, but now we've got this GCI wooden coaster back in 2018 called Wicker Man. I enjoy Wicker Man a hell of a lot more. But you, you can see with the Flume, couldn't you, with the with the removal of the Imperial Leather Sponsorship, sort of the end of the sponsorship, about a year or so, sort of on its last legs a little, a little bit, not too much, but a little bit, um, did, did dry up in a few places but then something was done with it. So it seems to be a bit of a Merlin trend, and that's no disrespect to the company or anything like that, but that seems to be a bit of a trend with recent attractions over the years, over the last few years especially, uh, where rides are on their last legs for a couple or a few years, and then finally something's done with it. So again, Kakuku Land on its legs for the last few years, needed something done with it, World Dave Williams comes in, and the dungeon comes into Charlie as well. So uh, again, a couple of years on its last legs. So for me, I think that you know, dual going, it's great to see something done with it, and you'll bet your lucky backsides I will be there on the opening day of Alton Towers once again next year to try out whatever's coming to the park next year so and giving it a fair review as well. I am aiming, fingers crossed, for the opening day of this new attraction, so stay tuned for more details. So John tweeted this, can't put my finger on what lies in store, but I feel what's to happen all happened before. So we know Chuck Burton is the creative director over as part of the Merlin group, should we say. Merlin Magic Making. And basically, this tweet is very, very interesting. It, it, it's definitely um, raised some eyebrows, shall we say. Now, the reason why it's raised eyebrows is because of the... the, the the closing date of Jewel, but also what lies in store, what lies. Now the what lies bit has got people even more frantic because it relates to Nemesis of Terror's old campaign, Nemesis What Lies Beneath, which was the code name for the project over the 2011 construction going into 2012 before the ride opened as Nemesis of Terror. Now obviously I don't think they intended to do anything with Sub Terror with that tweet. Uh, I do think this hints towards the Jewel refurbishment though I think this does relate to what was announced yesterday with the closing date of the ride. Um, now, that is just one uh, little bit, bit of evidence. It could be absolutely nothing to do with anything. Could just be a tweet. Uh, but we know the coaster enthusiast community, we know the theme park enthusiast community, something must be linked, surely. <laughs> um, but now, for me, I think it is linked. I think it is linked to the Jewel overhaul for, for, for next year, which we know will probably happen next year now. Um, or open next year, shall we say? Um, but the the phrase, if we're going off that basis, though, what uh, by feel what's to happen all happened before. Another hint that the haunted house is coming back to its old roots, maybe in a new way, or a classic with a twist kind of way. Those of you who are diehard Alton Towers fans, do you remember this ride? The controversial genetic surgeon has vanished leaving behind a legacy of unfinished research into the reanimation of the dead. People fear that this is just the beginning of something terrible. The forensic investigation has been stepped up within the grounds of Dr. Nicholas Rudin's home. 
Police confirm they have no further clues at this time. This is Richard O'Connor reporting live for ATNC. And for those of you who are true long-term diehard Alton Towers fans way before then, do you remember this ride? Would you dare to explore the haunted house? Now, I wasn't born during that ride, but I definitely remember the other ride. Of course, I'm talking about Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Back, formerly known as the Haunted House at the Alton Towers Resort. I know it's getting a refurbishment for this year. We've got some details. Now, before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click that case boss name YouTube video. Let's get straight into this one. Let's have a look at the statements revealed by Millions Management just recently over the last 48 hours we have shut the ride so we can redo it it'll be more like the original haunted house with a completely new story some of the old victorian techniques the use of mirrors for example are still so good the melon magic making team has been here and i'm excited about what they have planned a lot of people fondly remember the old haunted house and we think this is going to be huge now the original haunted house which opened back in 1992 it was a signature dart ride however we knew things were coming in 2002 ready for 2003 when signs began to pop up around that site to promote jewel brand new props were brought in a brand new storyline was introduced and ride vehicles were installed with the blasters and the scoreboards jewel was born now then throughout last season we knew something was happening to the attraction, especially during the latter half of 2022. Throughout the 2022 season, rumours circulated the ride would receive an extensive overhaul for 2023. The first signs of that rumour becoming true came in during August. A sign appeared in the attraction's exit stating 06 plus 09 equals the jewel is over this is my house. This was interpreted to mean the attraction would close for the final time on the 6th of September 2022. It was also thought the message of this is my house could be coming from the ghost of Emily Alton living within the haunted doll's house in the queue line. On the 7th of September, people woke up to the news the property had been repossessed, with signs appearing around Jules stating as much along with the message, strictly no unwanted visitors. Due to unnatural displays in the area, similar also appeared on the results app and website. Till those statements came out in the press over the last 48 hours, and we now know a bit more about what we can expect. We can expect a classic haunted house with the modern day technologies to bring back classic vintage effects. Another thing we know is that certain scenes have been removed and I'm going to share with you those scenes right now. Spoiler alert if you haven't ridden the original Jewel. The zombie lab finale from Jewel, the black wall scene in the skip looking very similar to those seen in that scene. That photo was from Theme Park Jax, so a shout out to him. And of course, the photo credit goes to Jake Pierce. The Sinister Garden. Now, this scene was seen in the queue for the Invitation Scare attraction. Unlikely to come back, they dumped it in an outdoor queue line. Uh, that's come from Jake Price on Twitter, shout out to him. The Trommel Tunnel, aka the Tunnel of Doom, which has not been working for a long, long time. The Trommel facing nearby walls were seen dumped behind the ride. That's according to Tower Street, so shout out to them for that photo. And also the mirror balls, which were used to sit above the entrance, also currently being stored behind Jewel. And the Hall of Spiders, again, according to Tower Street, the column in the backyard of Alton Towers is from the Hall of Spiders scene. So given that four scenes have been removed, the suspicion is that we'll be riding a very different ride to either of the previous iterations in 2023. This haunting new attraction to replace the Jewel Haunted House Strikes Back will be opening sometime in 2023. Is it going to be for the start of the year? Is it going to be later in the year? I'm sure we will soon find out. But here's my thoughts on what I think we could be expecting in the attraction. All of you lads and lasses out there, all of you ladies and gentlemen out there, that have ridden Jewel will know that this ride is da 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 needing some work for a while. Finally, the time has come. The time has arrived for Jewel to receive the hard work it needs. Now, what do I think it will be? I think the Emily Alton rumor theory has some kind of truth to it. I think that could be a real possibility. Other possibilities are an IP, which I don't think it will be. If you don't know what an IP is, intellectual property, and 
basically that means a brand from a TV show or a film. I'm wearing a Walking Dead shirt. Now that is an IP. That's a brand. All the shows are available obviously. Scroll around the telly, you know, use your remote, you'll find one. Overall, I don't think it'll be an IP. I, I think it'll be an original idea. I think Alton Towers usually do some hard work on these rides and they're going to do some good work again. Overall, like I said, I'm very excited to see what this is going to be. And I can't wait for it to open in 2023 and hopefully we'll be down there for the opening day. A haunting dark ride taking you on a hair-raising journey through the spectacular twists and turns of the cursed manor. Coming, ready or not, the abandoned Alton Manor are repossessed under mysterious circumstances will be inviting you inside. Have your wits about you as you ride deeper into the historic manor. So for those of you who don't know much about this project, this is the overhaul and refurbishment of Jewel, The Haunted House Strikes Back. Now, Jewel was a shooting dart ride that took over the original Haunted House from 1992. Jewel opened in 2003, the year after the 10th birthday of The Haunted House and strange happenings were happening in the Haunted House in 2002, ready for its 2003 reopening as Jewel. Now, first of all, the original Haunted House, which opened in the Gloomy Wood section along with Katanga Canyon back in 1992. The Haunted House was designed by the Sparks Group and legendary creator John Wardley, and was the largest Haunted House attraction in Europe at the time of the opening. The transit system, basically the track system for the ride, was built by a company called Mac from Germany. Those of you who are general 100% theme park enthusiasts and fans and super fans will know that Mac rides from Germany. Of course, the owner of that, Michael Mac, is famous for Europa Park. So the Mac have a bespoke history of theme parks and building attractions all around the world. Now, Mac Rides created this dart ride system, this haunted house dart ride attraction, which was the haunted house at the Alton Towers Resort back in 1992. It was designed to allow a high throughput whilst leaving the cars to travel the ride separately and at varying speeds in different areas. It opened in March 1992. It remained one of the most historic rides at the Alton Towers Resort and one of the major rides at the park for many years gaining much publicity at the time. Now then, strange happenings were happening down in the building ready for 2003 to bring about Jewel, the haunted house strikes back, adding guns to the attraction, sensors to the ride, and also little additions in theming as well. However, during the 2022 season, it seemed like the long awaited overhaul or change up of Jewel was finally gonna come to fruition. And we have to go from the beginning of 2022, where the rumours were swirling on the future of Jewel, after quite a few years now, where theme park fans have been discussing the debate. And it's been it's been a debate for the last sort of five, six years now, in terms of what's going to happen to the ride. We know that over the years, they were adding stuff, changing things to the ride. We know that one of the main changes in the last few years was, of course, the sensors on the ride and the lighting around the ride which was changed to a different kind of lighting which meant you could see the actual mechanics of the animatronics better which kind of ruined the experience a lot more obviously one of the main effects that were broken for the longest amount of time was the spinning trommel tunnel with this swirling information of rumors about the future of the ride at the beginning of the year it was bound to come to some kind of fruition. Jewel was a very interesting ride for me. I never got to do the original Haunted House before it changed into Jewel in 2003. I was too young at the time. And, you know, I always regretted never getting the chance to experience the Haunted House in person for myself, the original attraction. Same with the old Log Flume before it became the Flume. I never got the chance to experience the original Log Flume before Alton Towers. I, I experienced the Flume for many years to come, but I never got to see the log flume. I remember the flume from the Imperial Leather sponsorship and I remember it after the Imperial Leather sponsorship kind of disbanded itself from the ride and it just became known as the flume on plug. It's those kind of memories that you wish you had with the Alton Towers Resort as a kid. Of course I made my own memories with the park but um, it's those kind of old memories that you wish you could have had as well. And the Haunted House was definitely one of them. And having the memories of Jewel, experiencing the old soundtrack, the old queue line, the refurbishment, over the Towers Living Care program, the little changes here and there. I think that Jewel became a slightly worse ride 
over the years. Jewel, like every other ride in this country and around the world, is 100% properly maintained. Parks do a fantastic job of keeping these attractions running. It's very important to mention that. For me, though, I feel like Jewel's quality of storytelling gradually got worse over the years, especially with the addition of the lights, which made the mechanics show more while you're riding on the experience. I think it kind of ruined the experience more down the years. With more broken effects, more broken animatronics, it became very hard to ride from that point onwards. And, the, you know, there was even a few times in the last sort of three, four years of the ride where I didn't even bother using the guns. I just wanted to do it. It's like when you had a stressful day at work, you go on a park bench and you relax. That's what the ride felt like for, I'd say, the last three, four, maybe even five years. It felt like a relaxing park bench sit down in a park somewhere. It's like going to, I mean, people from Donny will know this. It's like going up to Woodfield Park or something, or Hexthorpe Park and sitting on a park bench, you know. It, it just felt like a, a sit down on a peaceful bench in a park somewhere with the, with, with the nature around you. But instead you're sitting on a, on a moving bench with just some haunted noises that didn't really phase you. What's great about this is we're getting a full refurbishment of the ride. And we're going to see, hopefully, the scares return with the attraction. So here's some stuff then on the removal of the jewel and the introduction of the Curse of Alton Manor. Throughout 2022, rumours circulated the ride would receive an extensive overhaul for 2023. Now on the 23rd of August 2022, a sign appeared in the attraction's exit stating 06 plus 09 equals the jewel is over, this is my house. It was meant to interpret that the attraction would close on the 6th of September 2022. It was also thought the message could be coming from the ghost of Emily Alton, who lives within the haunted doll's house in the queue line. Now, with the promotional poster released today, which is on your screen, it definitely suggests that that is the case, that Emily Alton is involved in some way in this storyline. And there were rumours circulating about Emily Alton's doll's house, and you're traveling through this massive doll's house and experiencing the haunts that overcome the doll's house, which I believe will become Alton Manor. Or it could be a case of the doll house comes to life and takes over. The spirits of the doll house take over Alton Manor. That could be what we're about to experience this year. <clears throat> On the 7th September, people woke up to the news the property had been repossessed, with signs appearing around Jewel stating as much, along with the message, strictly no unwanted visitors due to unnatural displays in the area. Similar to what also appeared on the resort's website and app, and now it remained to be seen what the future had in store for the ride until today, the announcement of the Curse of Alton Manor. The reason why we've gone through a bit of history on the Halton House and Jewel again is for those of you who didn't watch a previous video on the attractions overhaul, and for those of you who want to know a little bit of history around both rides, just to give you a bit of knowledge about the area which this attraction is going to sit in. So, of course, you're probably wondering if you're not familiar with Alton Towers Resort, if you're a newbie, if you're a member of the general public that doesn't go as many times, if you've not been for a while, you're probably thinking, where is the Curse of Alton Manor? It will take over Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Bat, which is in the gloomy wood section of the park, which is located pretty much in the middle of Katanga Canyon and Forbidden Valley. Of course, Katanga Canyon, home to the Congo River Rapids and the Runaway Mine Train. Forbidden Valley, home to rides such as Galactica, The Blade, and also Nemesis, but not for this year. That will return in 2024. More stuff will be done on that as we get it. Gloomy Wood currently hosts the Haunted Hollow, as well as Jewel. The Haunted Hollow takes place over the old Park Railway track and it's a haunted walkthrough past some decent theming. Now, the Haunted Hollow was introduced in 2007. Now, this was when they also introduced the Something in the Dung Heat Playground, and also they introduced Extraordinary Golf, which is still there outside the monorail station to this day. Gloomy Wood will now be home to the Curse of Alt Manor, and I'm really excited to see what the queue line's gonna look like, the station, the whole queue line experience, because it's not just about the ride for me, it's about the storytelling, it's about immersing guests into a story like you would do a book or a film. And it's gonna be very important to see how the queue line experience, the storyline, and how the whole ride experience, and the exit, and the gift shop, every single element of an attraction has to be part of the story. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how much has gone into that story. Now we know that John Burton, the creative lead, has been on this project. We know Miller Magic Making has been in this project. We know that John Wardley has been helping out in this project. And trust me, 
Mel Magic Making and John Burton, they know what they're doing. But when you put John Wardley into the mix as well, it creates a special kind of atmosphere as a theme park enthusiast. It gives you a special feeling because John Wardley is an absolute legend in this industry. He created Nemesis. He created Vampire. He created Oblivion. He created Air. He created the Smile. He was involved in the Smiler. So, you know, this guy is a legend in the industry. And when you've got him in the atmosphere, when you've got him in the project involved in some capacity, it's definitely worth the wait. Now then, my overall thoughts on the Curse of Alton. I think this is going to be a wonderful ride experience. I think this is going to be a very terrifying ride experience for new riders, for the general public, I think for the theme park enthusiasts. It's going to be a real sort of throwback to the past with the old haunted house, the heritage of the old haunted house attraction coming back from 1992 in a modern way. We're going to get that classic haunted house feeling again with this attraction. Now, as far as I'm aware and from what I've heard, this is set to open on opening weekend. So that will be the 26th of March, to my understanding. So obviously we're waiting for official confirmation on that. But my feeling, my gut feeling from what I've been hearing is the opening weekend of the season, which is the last week of March. So I am off work for that. So fingers crossed, either a short break or a one day I will be there for that, so stay tuned for a vlog from the opening day of Alton Towers. I will be at Blackpool Pleasure Beach the opening weekend uh, before that weekend, so I am missing the Salford City game and the Northampton home game. For those of you who are Donny Rovers fans who are watching this video, you won't see a vlog from the Salford game or the Northampton game, but you will see vlogs from Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the Alton Towers Resort, so stay tuned for that one. I'll be doing a full review in a separate video as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, this is going to be a really fabulous year for the Alton Towers Resort with the refurbishment of Nemesis going on ready for 2024 with Project Horizon going down in the old coaster corner for 2025 and you've got the opening of the Curse of Alton Manor along with, I'm sure, some other alterations, some other TLC around the park. I'm sure other things will be done to improve and enhance the experience of the theme park and the resort over 2023. Since Jewel opened in 2003, it became part of many childhoods to those who came to Alton Towers over the last couple of decades, similar to what the Haunted House did over a decade of operation during the 90s and early thousands. So I think really, to be honest with you, Jewel obviously quite, it had quite a unique sort of feel. It was very much attached to the sort of whole laser gun kind of fad that was sort of attached to the early sort of 2010s. Um, or sorry, early 2000s, not 2010s. Um, so obviously, you know, rebranding at that time, it kind of fitted with the sort of trend at that time. But as it kind of went on, it obviously got more um, sort of unpopular and it, it kind of got mixed reviews. I definitely feel like obviously it's, it was quite sort of, it was very tacky, but very fun at the same time. And I definitely feel like people will mostly remember it for that. Uh, also kind of the interactive thing and maybe just kind of sort of trying to get your scores really, I think more than anything else, having fun with the family. I think it leaves a, a huge legacy. Um, it's been there for a very long time. And um, yeah, the, the curse is, is built on the foundations of, of a world-class dark ride, which was Jewel. So I think it leaves a, a huge legacy. I think Jewel will leave behind like a really fun legacy. I think it's a lot of people's first scary ride. There's not many dark rides at Towers. It's hardly any. So yeah, I just think it'll just be missed for how fun it was. Many believe Jewel's renovation has been long overdue. It's long, long overdue. I would say a good sort of five to maybe seven years in my personal opinion. I've been saying at least for the last sort of three quite vocally that something needed to happen with Jewel. Uh, effects have been down, things have been obviously broken. The trouble has been broken for a good, I may think maybe about four or five years now. Um, so it's nice that Alton Towers have finally decided to take the decision to rebrand this ride and give it the major sort of love and attention that it needs. I kind of think like obviously this is going to be quite an improvement and it's nice to see them sort of heading back to the ride's original roots as well. So yeah, it's great to see it finally happening. But some may think it's not too long overdue. This might be controversial, but I genuinely didn't think it needed touching. I know that is controversial, but I, I liked it how it was. I thought it was fun. There are bits that didn't work, like the Trommel Tunnel has been broken for since I can ever remember. But I liked how it was, however, I am still extremely excited to see what they do next. I don't know if this is controversial, but personally, I don't think it's too overdue at all. Because I absolutely love Jewel and um, I still felt like, even though I've done it hundreds of times, I still felt like it had that rewrite ability. 
maybe it was getting a bit old, and I'm, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why they have done this uh, huge overhaul. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. But um, personally, I don't think I'd have been happy with it to stay the same. I wouldn't have uh, complained whatsoever. So for those of you that need an explanation, the Curse of Alton Manor is a haunting dart ride taking you on a hair-raising journey through the spectacular twists and turns within the Cursed Manor. The abandoned Alton Manor, rep repossessed under mysterious circumstances, invites you inside. Have your wits about you, uncover the story of Emily Alton, and ride deeper into the historic manor. I love the name. I think it's a bit long, it's a bit of a mouthful. Like we were on about the other day, like what will we refer to it as? Will we say the full name? Will we shorten it to the curse? Will we shorten it to the manor? But yeah, I like it. I like that it's set at Alton Towers, like Alton Manor. Like I think that's really cool. I love the theme. It sounds very dark. I'm excited, yeah. So to be honest with you, actually, I was quite excited. I like the whole sort of idea around sort of the possessed kind of theme they've gone for. Uh, obviously, Emily Alton herself is quite an iconic character. She's been in that queue line for a long, long time. Um, and obviously, even though we've only kind of sort of seen her as a ghost in that sort of little doll's house, it's nice that Alton Towers have kind of honoured that sort of time on tradition of having her and expanded on her story. Um, I definitely feel like it's going to be a great kind of improvement. Obviously, it's going to offer something completely fresh to the ride. Um, and sort of the curse at Alton Manor, I kind of feel like there's a lot of things that are called the curse. The curse kind of seems to be a very common name to sort of kind of use. I mean, obviously, you look at what Chessington have done in theirs. But at the same time, it offers something kind of uh, fun to the ride and obviously kind of gives them the chance to be quite creative with the story, which in my personal opinion, it definitely looks like they've done that. So really good. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think um, it's great that they've stuck with like a classic haunted house style. Um, and I think the name is great as well because, you know, they could have just called it the haunted house, uh, gone back to its roots um, or something vague like Jewel. But I like what they've done. They've tried to already start that story uh, with the name, you know, it, it's already referring to a curse. It's already referring to uh, Alton Manor. So it, it's putting you in, uh, the, it's situating you in that location as well. I think that's really good. And I think it gives us as fans and the casual theme park guests, like a good insight into this is going to be a story driven experience, or that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Visitors will appear to vanish in front of your own eyes. The resort have revealed in this new spine-turning attraction featuring flying demons, levitating dolls and haunted chandeliers when it opens this weekend on Saturday the 18th of March 2023. Well, I'm not sure on what we can expect, but I think if you have a look at the marketing, uh, which they've done a fantastic job of, I think all of the posters and the videos, um, there's tons of Easter eggs in there. It's littered with them, which is great fan service, but it's also really good that it it's good to see. Um, and I think that will continue throughout the ride. I think it'll be hard to spot, but I'm really looking forward to see how much of it uh, I can get when I ride it for the first time. Um, so I think we can see lots of Easter eggs and I'm expecting from the tone of it as well, I'm expecting to be a little bit scared inside. I'm, I'm expecting it to be quite a spooky experience um to say the least so yeah but what i hope for um i do hope for the easter eggs so i'm looking forward to that um but i'm hoping for a cool audio experience um i'm quite biased so i love my music and i'd love to hear maybe like whispers uh from uh emily who they've been teasing in these trailers and um i'd love to hear i'd love to see the rides experiment with some really cool audio that'd be what i'm after We've had that kind of behind the scenes look today. The, the theme in itself looks really good. It really looks like they've taken their time to sort of think about what they're putting into that ride space. Um, in personal sort of opinion, I think we're possibly looking at the kind of addition of a pre-show to the ride. I would certainly hope that they've kind of done that. It would fit with it and it adds an extra depth of story to the attraction. It works really well with Wicker Man proven that. So something like that within the Curse of Alton Manor was certainly embellished on that story. But I think in all fairness, I think we're looking at a very eerie atmosphere. I think the use of uh, sort of a good balance between obviously, you know, sort of special effects and physical effects as well. And also, as you've seen, there are quite a few nods within the ride to existing attractions or past attractions as well. So it's kind of nice to have added those in, um, kind of acknowledging the legacy that Alton Towers has and obviously the legacy of the time that the ride's been at the, at the uh, park. So there you go. I'm not expecting it to be completely, totally different, but I'm hoping to see some brand new scenes. I'm hoping for it to be quite dark and just some really good theming, really good lighting and a good soundtrack. 
the original Haunted House attraction from 1992 and Duel the Haunted House Strikes Back had its legion of fans and has an increase in confidence that the curse at Alton Manor is no exception. If it's good then yeah absolutely I'd love to see Towers do more dark rides, I love a dark ride. I also love what they've done with like all the marketing around the Curse of Autumn Manor. I like all the hype that's been building for months now. Like they did the pop up thing in London, and I think that it's cool. Like it gets everyone excited, and if they were to do new rides in the future, I'd love to see them continue that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a completely brand new experience. You know, they've been quite vocal about the fact that they are adding in new elements that have not yet been seen in the UK theme parks. I think the addition of the kind of sort of um, enhanced audio they've mentioned today in the press release we've received, I think that's very interesting. Look forward to seeing, obviously, how that pans out when we ride the attraction. Um, and also the addition of kind of sort of all the, the projection mapping and the fun kind of effects and things they've used and sort of almost having what looks to be half a ride where you're sort of at a normal size and then kind of shrinking the audience down for what looks to be the second part of the ride as well. It's going to be a very unique experience. I can certainly see this ride having its own cult following sort of moving forwards as you say the haunted house had it you know sort of its cult following uh jewel not so much you know there's a lot of fans of it but it never kind of had that cult status but i definitely feel like the curse of all manner could potentially bring that back to the attraction so yeah it's definitely going to be fun with popular with uh future generations yeah i think i think it will i think it's it's been built for that longevity it's, it's a classic haunted tale from what it looks and sounds like from what we've seen so far so um yeah, I think it's going to go the distance and I do I do think it's going to win over a lot of people's hearts. Um, Duel will be sorely missed, but I think um, this ride's going to be super special and I can't wait. So let's take a deeper look inside the Curse of Alton Manor and certain scenes that have been revealed through Alton Towers in social media photos inside the brand new attraction. Warning, spoiler alert. So here's picture number one. Now this is a huge entrance gateway theming into one of the rooms, giving the feeling of entering a huge dollhouse to play the games of Emily Alton. It looks like you're about to enter into the first room in the house with some greyish stained looking walls. Now of course this may not be the start of the attraction, this could be a little bit further into the attraction. However it definitely seems like it's the beginning of the attraction with the fact that you are entering that doll's house. And even though I can't particularly distinguish whereabouts in the old jewel ride this is, I do believe personally that this is definitely looking like a bit of a start to the attraction. You definitely wouldn't put an enter into the doll's house which is part of the main storyline you know, midway through an attraction, you'd have it right at the start in logistic terms. So I would suggest this the start of the attraction. Picture number two shows different props circulating one side of the room in the scene, such as my dream house and no one can ever leave, as well as the naughty corner signs. Barrel with slime over the top gives vibes of creepy caves at Chessington World Adventures. A toy parts box was seen, which is looking kind of creepy right there. And it looks like some kind of playroom scene. Now this does give vibes of a playroom scene or some kind of activity room or activity scene. Now this gives off very creepy play like vibes and it definitely seems like there's a, an element of mystery surrounding it. Especially with these sort of toy parts and the, the spare parts for toys. It definitely gives that kind of making toys, making evil toys as part of the nightmare kind of vibe with this particular scene. Now picture number three shows more signs and theming such as plans for my new mummy and daddy which suggests the story could be based around an entity that wants to mould humans into new dolls for her doll's house. From the looks of it the ride system is staying the same which is the expectation of the ride but it does give me vibes of the gangster granny in terms of the style and the setting of the ride system and how it's landscaped inside the building. Now what I mean by that is if you look at some of the scenes inside gangster granny and how the way it's been set out and some of the projections and some of the scene items and prop items on the corners are set out and also the dungeon as well the Alton Towers dungeon gives vibes of sort of different items in the dark during the boat ride and how it's sort of perched on the corners as the boat travels around it in a sort of circular motion it definitely gives off that kind of vibe bit of a gangster granny bit of an Alton Towers dungeon where it's pretty much the items are in the corners uh, there are scenes where they will be dotted around the sides, however there are some scenes where you're going to have to turn a corner and there'll be stub stuff in the corner. It definitely gives off that kind of vibe in terms of the way it's been landscaped compared to Gangster Granny The Ride. Now then, the scene in question in picture 3 gives vibes of a dungeon room or a basement with the pins 
including a corkscrew box, which hints at an old ride, if you know, you know, and the wild mouse poison, which is an interesting item. So definitely sounds like a, a dungeon or a basement, um, kind of like a, a sort of spare part of the house where they keep some of the darker stuff, like the, the wild mouse poison, for example. So again, definitely hint of a dungeon scene there in picture number three. Um, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Picture number four, signpost on the floor saying, I'll give you a wretched little creature, which could into the riders or a really dark part of the story. The cobwebs, the mannequins and the dolls surrounding the room makes it look like some kind of attic scene. Now, of course, one particular part of the trailer that I noticed was the human turning into a spider which is in a similar setting to what we can see in this particular scene. So this does give vibes of an attic scene and something about the spiders. Now we could see a modernized version of a spider effect, like the one seen in the old haunted house or jewel. I believe that a modernized spider effect could be fantastic in this particular scene. A really nice scary animatronic. Picture number five looks like the return of an original haunted house scene a scene from the original Haunted House attraction, vibes of the Grand Hall, it's a dining slash Grand Hall scene. Two of the undead sitting in an uncandle lit meal with pillars and walls cracked around them, seeming to confirm still theming as well as animatronics and potential projections in the ride. Now a variety of effects and storytelling items to create a haunted experience the park wants to offer. Now this particular scene just got, does give off really nice retro vibes, nice retro Grand Hall Haunted House vibes scene. Now I believe there's some more secrets to this, I think there'll still be some extra stuff in it, you see the nice green lighting in the picture, again gives us some nice spooky, scary, undead vibes there, and I feel like the undead could play a part in this particular storyline for the Curse of Alton Manor as a bit of a little homage to Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back despite the removal of the guns of the ride. Left alone in the attic with nothing but her doll's house to keep this quiet, but curious girl amused, Emily has become lonely and forgotten, hosted by her parents to the higher society. Echoing through the floors of the grand hall below, her hatred grew, fueled by frustration and bitterness. Dark forces began to surround Emily, becoming a vessel for the evil that has seeped into every corner of the manor. Now, the ride is set to feature reportedly special effects, including projection mapping and mirrors that will play tricks on guests as they navigate the manor. So a lot of stuff to unpack in this video, some stuff from the pop-up house that was there weeks ago, some stuff from the new storyline which was revealed in the previous week, some stuff from the inside shots that was revealed this week, and also there some thoughts on Jewel, the haunted house, and the curse of Alton Manor from the likes of Theme Park Insanity and Arch Nemesis, and also Parks at Pints as well. So overall, the Curse of Alton Manor is definitely going to be one of those attractions that absolutely rocks. It definitely sounds like it's going to be a fantastic attraction for all involved. What do I think this attraction is so far going into Monday's visit? So we'll be at Alton Towers on the Monday, the 20th of March, two days after the opening day, because of course on the Saturday, I am at Blackpool Pleasure Beach opening day to experience Icon, Pepsi Max Big One, all the, the big rides over there, and to see the progress being made of Valhalla ahead of its technical rehearsal next month. I'm definitely super excited about this Curse at Alton Manor at Alton Towers. I think it's a fantastic addition to the park. I believe we're looking here in terms of a style of ride and theme of ride in terms of the category of audience for this ride. We're looking at a family horror dark ride, but definitely seems to be a lot sinister and a more scarier dark ride than a family one, but it seems to be aimed at family in terms of the actual ride system and kind of the, the sort of languages and the methods being used. It seems more family related. However, definitely the theme sounds a lot more scary than a family dart ride. I think we're looking at a Coraline type target audience for this attraction in terms of age range we should be expecting and what it is expected to receive going into the opening weekend. Smoke is here. It's time for the curse at Alton Manor. So it's still about 40 odd minutes before the rides open. Lovely bunting going on. We saw some of these wooden poles being put up sort of during the Kids Pass takeover vlogs and sort of during the, before the start of the season. And yeah, the curse at Alton Manor. We're about to step into the area for the very first time since I was last here in near the summer when Jewel was the ride. And now it is the curse at Alton Manor. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Gloomy Wood has been revitalized. Look at this. Alton Manor, 
property for sale, Sparks Estate, Sparks one of the old companies as part of the old ride, property for sale, over the archway, Wardley Estate Agents, nice reference to the original creator there, John Wardley, look at this, this is amazing, Doom and Sons funeral service there, look at that, so we've got a brand new food stall, which is Coach House Confectionery, and we have Attic of Antiquities, I think that's how it's pronounced, and here's the facade, look at that, it looks all mystical and unique, it's fantastic. You see the, the little demon at the bottom of the tomb has gone. Emily Alton now resides over this tombstone. You can see the crypt. Actually, there used to be like a big tank where the zombie was uh, just around here. So that's been moved and it's now over here. So this used to be the old crypt over the top of that tomb just at the side there. Now this is the entrance for the curse at Old Manor. I'm about to step inside. Step inside the queue line, and I can smell the darkness and the smoke. I can smell it. I can absolutely smell it. Very, very good. The smoke makes it a really nice atmosphere, a nice eerie horror atmosphere. The blue light definitely helps with the smoke as well. I think the purple and the blue lights work with the smoke incredibly, incredibly well. The references on the tombstones are amazing. There's plenty of references to the flume, to ripsaw, to corkscrew, to jewel. Uh, I didn't spot the jewel one at first. I may need a couple more rides to sort of check some more of the references. However, I definitely saw ripsaw. Definitely saw corkscrew and definitely saw the flume, the quackers uh, tombstone. But overall, the experience in the queue line, in the outdoor queue line anyway, is fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to the indoor queue line experience just around that corner over there. But overall, I'm really impressed so far with the Curse at Alton Manor. And it's definitely enhancing and hyping up the experience a lot more. So let's get around this corner in about half an hour's time and let's get inside. Just come off the curse at Alton Manor for the very first time and I can definitely tell you it does not disappoint now for those of you who don't like spoilers do skip forward but in there was fantastic the scare level compared to Jewel was so much better a few nice jump scares in there uh, overall a fantastic experience and the storyline seems to revolve around you being shrunk down to become one of Emily Alton's dolls. That seems to be the storyline that we're getting from this. So I'll, I'll, I'll need a few more rides on it to really get the storyline 100%. But overall, I think we're expecting it to be some kind of a shrink down to a doll's house type storyline. A proper classic haunted house type storyline. So I thought it was really cool. Uh, the way the storyline fits in with the experience. And the you could tell there's a good mix there of projections, uh, projection mapping, technology. A good mix of classic horror effects as well overall some really good effects around the attraction a good mix of modern and old technology and haunted house effects so overall really great in that attraction out of 10 for the first ride I'm gonna give it an 8 I think there was a verge of an e-stop just near the end but I think we were just out of frame from the e-stop so we were just out of the way to enjoy the full experience but um, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, 8 out of 10 for that ride for me. I think it was absolutely fantastic. Was it better than Jewel? It was absolutely better than Jewel by a clear few miles. Jewel for me felt like an aged attraction. It needed doing up for some time. And the Curse at Alton Manor is definitely that refurbishment. It's definitely lived up to expectations. And there's a good mix of old and new in there. And it's definitely worth the wait. Ah! 